More than 840 pounds of samples were collected from the moon between 1969 and 1972. The moon has always been with us, ancient, silent, a loyal sentinel in Earth's sky. It lit our darkest nights. It stirred our oceans. It inspired myths, missions, and a thousand dreams. Discovery Houston, negative return. Copy, negative return. To the naked eye, it seems unchanging, a static relic etched in craters and dust. But we were wrong, because beneath its scarred surface lies a story that's still unfolding, and it's far more dynamic than we ever imagined. For years, we believed we knew the moon. NASA walked its planes, the Soviets mapped its scars, and for decades, its mysteries sat quietly until someone new dared to ask different questions. Not from Houston, not from Moscow, but from the East. In the past decade, China has achieved major breakthroughs that redefined what's possible in lunar exploration. Not through spectacle, but through silence, precision and persistence. Their robotic missions have gone where no one else dared to land. They uncovered a previously unknown lunar mineral, discovered for the first time by China. Water where we thought there was none, and evidence that reshapes our very understanding of how the moon and Earth came to be. This is not the moon we thought we knew. This is a new beginning. Lunar exploration once echoed with the roar of rockets and the rivalry of superpowers. But after Apollo and Luna faded, the moon went quiet. A forgotten stage from an old plane. Then came Chang'e 4. In 2019, China made history, not with fanfare, but with calculated ambition. It became the first nation to soft land a spacecraft on the far side of the moon, a realm forever hidden from Earth's gaze. It wasn't a stunt, it was a statement. The lander settled gently inside the Von Karman crater, deep within the South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the oldest and largest impact scars in the solar system. Out rolled the U-22 rover, a machine built not for glory, but for endurance. It braved the freezing lunar nights. It crawled across jagged terrain. It listened to the rocks. And slowly, it began to rewrite the moon's story. Through this quiet persistence, China didn't just explore. They claimed leadership. Not through flags and footprints, but through science. Every rock on the moon is a frozen whisper from the past, a clue to the chaos that forged our solar system. For decades, we believed the giant impact hypothesis that a Mars-sized body collided with Earth, casting molten debris into orbit that became our moon. Apollo samples seemed to support this. The rocks were chemically similar to Earth's crust, close enough to suggest they came from the same source. But then came the far side. U-22's instruments pierced below the surface. Its radar and spectrometers revealed something different. Material richer in olivine and magnesium representing the moon's lower crust composition. And then came the real shock, the age. U-22's instruments revealed subsurface layers with unusual compositions, suggesting that volcanic activity on the far side may have lasted longer than previously believed. If the moon was formed from Earth debris, it should have cooled quickly. So why does it still show signs of inner heat? Is our origin story incomplete? Has another impact? or an entirely different process shaped the moon's inner world? What was once a simple tale is now a layered, evolving mystery. Sometimes, space exploration doesn't need a breakthrough to captivate the world. Sometimes, it just needs a rock. In late 2021, U-22 was on its steady crawl across the far side when it spotted something. Strange. On the horizon stood what looked like a cube, a perfectly shaped object rising from the dust. The world erupted in speculation. Was it an alien artifact? A forgotten probe? A monolith echoing 2001? A space odyssey? The rover approached. Days passed, weeks. The tension grew. And then, it was just a rock. A simple boulder, sculpted by chance and shadow, pixelation and perspective. Disappointment? Not quite. Because that moment reminded us of something important. Even in a place we thought we knew, the moon can still surprise us. And curiosity is never wasted. 
Behind every illusion is a lesson, and sometimes the journey toward the truth matters more than the truth itself. In 2020, China did what no one had done in over four decades. It brought the moon back home. Chang'e 5 touched down in a volcanic region known as the Mons Rumka Volcanic Complex, an area of overlapping lava domes in Oceanus Procellarum, untouched by Apollo or Luna. It scooped up 1.7 kilograms of rock and soil, sealed them tightly, and sent them hurtling back to Earth. But the real revelation came under the microscope. These weren't ancient relics like the Apollo samples. They were young, only 2 billion years old. That meant volcanic activity on the moon didn't end early. It lingered, pulsing beneath the surface long after we assumed it had gone still. What kept the moon warm? Was it radioactive decay? Was it something deeper, a mystery sealed beneath its crust? These rocks didn't just reset the lunar timeline, they shattered it and they begged a bigger question. What else lies buried in this forgotten world, waiting to rewrite history? Hidden inside those samples was something extraordinary, something the moon had never shown us before. A crystal, tiny, transparent, beautiful. Scientists named it Chang'e Site Wa and the first discovered by China. But it wasn't just pretty, it held something rare, something powerful. Alongside this crystal, scientists detected traces of helium-3, a rare isotope found in lunar soil that could one day fuel nuclear fusion. Clean, powerful, limitless. Earth barely has any. But the moon, bathed in solar wind for billions of years, may be covered in it. If we can unlock fusion, this tiny crystal could power cities, even civilizations. And the fact that China found it first, it might mean they hold the key to the future of energy. Not just on the moon, but here on Earth. For decades, the moon was considered dry, a desert of dust. Then we started finding hints, hydrogen traces, hydroxyl groups, but no real water. Until Chang'e 5 changed that, not in frozen shadows, not in deep craters, but in sunlit volcanic soil, chemically bound inside hydrated salts. Some of this water was found in a category of ultra-low maturity lunar soil, material that had been minimally altered by space weathering, preserving water-bearing minerals like apatite. This changed everything. Because water means life. It means breathable air. It means rocket fuel split into hydrogen and oxygen. And if it's not just locked in the poles, if it's scattered across the moon's surface, then human habitats don't need to hide in eternal darkness. They can thrive in the light. A new moon is emerging, one where astronauts can drink, breathe and build using the resources already under their boots. In 2024, China did it again. With Chang'e 6, they landed in the ancient South Pole Aitken Basin and became the first to bring samples back from the far side of the moon. What they found changed the map. The rocks were different, lighter in color, thicker in texture, chemically unique. And strangely, some volcanic traces were younger than expected. This wasn't just the moon's hidden face. It was a second moon with its own history, its own scars, its own secrets. Why is one side smooth and dark while the other is rough and bright? Why did their geological paths diverge? These questions aren't just lunar puzzles. They may hold answers to Earth's own violent past. Chang'e 6 cracked open the door. Everything China has done, from Chang'e 3 to Chang'e 6, was part of a larger plan. A blueprint. Because exploration is just step one. Next is settlement. By 2035, China aims to build an international lunar research base near the moon's south pole in partnership with other nations. They're already mapping landing sites, testing robotics, identifying local resources, and designing systems to 3D print shelters from lunar dust. Helium-3, water and volcanic materials, once just scientific curiosities, 
are now being studied as resources that could one day support sustainable infrastructure. The moon is no longer a destination. It's a foundation for science, for sustainability, and for a leap beyond Earth. Mars, the asteroid belt, deep space, it all starts here, on the moon. For thousands of years, the moon has pulled at our imagination. A light in the dark, a clock in the sky, a mystery carved in stone. Now, it's speaking again, through crystal and crater, through water and heat, through signals from machines that never sleep. It's telling us that it is not just a relic of the past, it is a guidepost for the future. And in this new era, it's China that has stepped forward to listen. Quietly, persistently, brilliantly. As we enter the next great chapter in space exploration, one truth becomes undeniable. The moon is not finished with us, and we are only just beginning to understand what it's trying to say.